Bachelor of Physical Education and now as a part of our major subject which is the Applied Motor Control we will go to talk about the preparing for physical activity for people just beginning a physical activity program, advocate preparation may be the key to persistence. For those who have been regularly active for some time, some preparation can help reduce risk of injury and make activity more enjoyable. It is hoped that a person armed with good information about preparation will become involved and stay involved in physical activity for a lifetime. For long-term maintenance, Physical activity must be something that is a part of a person's normal lifestyle. There are some factors to consider before beginning physical activity. Physical activity requires the cardiovascular system to work harder. While this level of stress can promote positive adaptations, the stress on the heart can be unsafe and dangerous for certain individuals. The British Columbia Ministry of Health conducted extensive research to devise a procedure that would help people know when it was advisable to seek medical consultation prior to beginning or altering an exercise program. The goal was to prevent unnecessary medical examinations while at the same time helping people to be reasonably assured that regular exercise was appropriate. The research resulted in the development of the Physical Activity Readiness Questionnaire or the PARQ Questionnaire. The most recent revision of the PARQ consists of seven simple questions you can ask yourself to determine if medical consultation is necessary prior to exercise involvement. The American College of Sports Medicine or ACSM has developed additional guidelines to help determine if medical consultation or if a clinical exercise test is necessary prior to participation in physical activity programs. The ACSM divides people into three general categories. Table 1 American College of Sports Medicine Risk Stratification Categories and Criteria 1. Low Risk Younger people less than 45 for men and 55 for women are considered at low risk when they have no heart disease symptoms and have no more than one of the risk factors listed below. 2. Moderate Risk People without heart disease symptoms but who are older men 45 or more and women 55 and older or who have two or more of the risk factors listed below 3. High risk people with one or more of the signs or symptoms listed below or who have known cardiovascular, pulmonary or metabolic disease risk factors family history of heart disease smoker, high blood pressure or hypertension high cholesterol, abnormal blood glucose levels, obesity, sedentary lifestyle, low HDL cholesterol level. Let's know about the signs and symptoms. Chest, neck, or jaw pain from lack of oxygen to the heart, shortness of breath at rest or in mild exercise, dizziness or fainting, difficult or labored breathing when lying, Sitting or standing, ankle swelling, fast heartbeat, or heart palpitations. Table 2. Dressing for activity. 1. Avoid clothing that is too tight or that restricts movement. 2. Material in contact with the skin should be porous. 3. Clothing should protect against wind and rain but allow for heat loss and evaporation. 4. Wear layers so that a layer can be removed if not needed. 5. Wear socks for most activities to prevent blisters, abrasions, odor, and excessive show wear. The special cloth 1. Women should consider an exercise bra. 2. Men should consider an athletic supporter. 3. Wear helmets and padding for activities with risk of failing such as biking or inline skating. 4. 
wear reflective clothing for night activities. 5. Wear water shoes for some aquatic activities. In wearing a shoes, heel counter and stabilizer for stability and movement control. 2. Heel notch to protect Achilles tendon. 3. Adequate heel width for stability and to prevent ankle injury. 4. Some cushion prevents shock to the foot. Too much cushion inhibits the reflexes that protect the foot. 5. Lightweight shoes reduce energy cost in activity. 6. Use soles or out and mid with good traction to reduce risk of failing. 7. Wear shoes of adequate size, about one half size larger than normal. There is no way to be absolutely sure that you are medically sound to begin a physical activity program. Even a true exam by a physician cannot guarantee that a person does not have some limitation that may cause a problem during exercise. Use of the PARQ and adherence to the ACSM guidelines are advised to help minimize the risk while preventing unnecessary medical costs. However, if you are unsure about your readiness for activity, a medical exam and a clinical exercise test are the surest ways to make certain that you are ready to participate. Many experts recommend that the stretching portion of the warm-up be done after cardiovascular portion. These are the some examples of exercise. 1. Cardiovascular exercise. Before you perform a vigorous workout, walk or jog slowly for 2 minutes or more. After exercise, do the same. It's possible to this portion of the warm-up prior to muscle stretching. 2. Calf Stretcher This exercise stretch the calf muscles. Face a wall with your feet 2 or 3 feet away. Step forward on left foot to allow both hands to touch the wall. Keep the heel of your right foot on the ground. 2. Turn in slightly. Knee straight and buttocks tuck in. 3. Leg Hug This exercise stretch the hip and back extensor muscle. Lie on your back, bend one leg and grasp your thigh under the knee. Hug it to your chest. The last is the zipper. This exercise stretch the muscles on the back of the arm and the lower chest muscles. Lift right arm and reach behind head and down the spine. With the left hand, push down on right elbow and hold. Reverse arm position and repeat. 